Turn one has served it up for three of our, oh, our big wheel to wheel. Oh, geez. Up in the air, there goes the Carno off your road going uh, hatch. Well, this oh, is great this stuff. Wheel Cody to Mays wheel Roddy action. Give it. 0.3 of a second back to uh, Wheel to uh, wheel. Oh, look at that and crossover. Collins. And this is the race. This is P1 and P2 oh. in this race. Down the inside, our race leader holds on. Eddie Bezzi, got to hand it to Liam. Returning to the uh, racing last year as a state series champion. Great to see him back in the group. Cody Mains running. Fraser High in there as well. Great to see Fraser back. Had a good run at Sandown. Looking forward to seeing how that pans out. Cars poised on the grid there for the rest of the field to join in. Richard Davison there as well. He's leading a Class A, the Ken Engine Cars. Mark Zellner right alongside him. Can't wait to see how. MZ goes, terrific racer, got third in last year's Ken Engine Series, and uh, always a great bloke. The first bloke you should see when you walk in the door at Revolution Race Gear, he's the, the uh, apparel man the stars there, he's got a score on the grid, that's never what you want to see. Heading down into Turn 1, the championship being led by Cody Mains, Rusty to Jack Bussey and Daniel Frugus, and they all go through Turn number 1 and uh, in up two and three in a feverish hurry. Great look at the side there of the JCB car of Jamie Rowe, Spectrum 15, as they all stream on through the 91 right alongside there. That's Miguel SJ15 as well. So pretty much two brands in the, uh, the main Formula 4 championship, the Duratec engine cars are Miguel, the French car, and the Spectrum, the uh, Mike Pullen designed and built Spectrum out of all and race developments in Brayside. They do a uh, tremendous job and selling cars to the world in the, in the European, England, and right across North America. They've got some great success in the North American side of things as well. As uh, just watching for uh, this stalled car, we'll see if we can try and get up. It's, oh, it's buried oh. mid-pack in the Duratec field there. It's black and orange that's probably about the only thing that I could pick up maybe it was Fraser High no Fraser High is sitting there uh, in position it could have been Fraser High but I'm not prepared to put any money on that but uh, pick up a number on that car and just get the tail end of it and uh, our timing screens now are just slowly updating so that will give us an indication as to who's gone back numerous spots yeah it is Fraser High it's right back down through the field, got back underway before Richard Davison and Mark Zellner in the Ken Engine cars came through. Lock up there for the 88, that's evident. And uh, has lost a whole lot of space there. The car 56 there. That's Woods in uh, car number 56 in the uh, Apex Steel entry. Damon Woods in the Spectrum 15 there as well. And we start to pick up some of our main protagonists in the championship. There's car number 11 now, pushing back through the field. That's Fraser High, so had some good pace. Fraser qualified seventh in car number 11, the Spectrum 14 and a 125.92. Um, half a second off the 125.45 by Eddie Bezik, who is still at the front of the field, car number 31 leading the way. Got a bit of work to make up, but uh, he looks determined. His driving style certainly makes it look like he's he's got his eyes on the prize. It is fantastic form of racing, the Formula Fords. They are one of those kind of cars where you can put them anywhere on the track. 
not, a, not anywhere on the track is ultimately fast, but they do respond. The amazing response, you know, 10 millimetres of steering angle, and uh, you've, you've changed from one side of the track to the other, and they line up into turn one and two, and that's car number 31. Eddie Bezik, who acquitted himself very, very well last year. We're going to keep our eye out for Joe Fawcett in number 23. He didn't uh, do round one in the Construct Total Oil Australia Spectrum 15. And uh, we'll just keep an eye. So Joe currently sitting in fifth. But it was Eddie Bezik who he fought very hard for the title. Fraser High is making his way through the pack, as we said he would. This is great racing. I've, I've never actually been drawn to this form of racing, Darren. But, gee, watching how competitive these guys are, it actually... I, I reckon I could get addicted to watching this. Yeah, it's the wheel-to-wheel -wheel action, and sometimes when you do get, they do get racy towards the end of the race. It's the interlocking wheels, and by that I mean the front wheel between a front and rear wheel next to the side shots on these cars, where it, it does get uh, it does get very racy. Normally we've got the the luxury of having Paul Zitti, who is a very very experienced racer and campaigner in these cars, to help us with the. I'm going to say again the human condition. Yeah. But. Um, Paul, at his own admission, he's not a, an out-and-out out out front runner, but just loves to think hard of it. He's not one of these under-21-year-old or even some of these under-16-year-olds racing for Formula Ford glory to take the next step. The, you know, the flow through. Oh, Bussy. Oh. And force it now. That's uh, a big push there. The 31, Eddie Bezik just stays in the lead, but... Bussy in the 74 had a crack at it. Here comes the 43 of Lugano. There's Cody Mains Ruddy. And Cody Mains Ruddy had uh, a really good round one. And uh, leads the championship on 90 points over Jack Bussy. So they're two and three on the road at the moment. In fact, I'll probably take my eyes off the screen to look at the timing screen. And their positions have probably changed <laughs> by now. They're changing thick and fast. Up the inside goes the 23. Our reigning champion, Joe Fawcett watching very very closely to see where joe takes his racing career his dad a victorian rally champion in his subaru wrx uh, a number of seasons ago now but mark was uh, around for a long long time in rallying built his own wrx and won the championship and uh, is a very very experienced racer so you wonder why joe such a young bloke is so mature he's got his dad in his ear and he's not one of those uh aggressive type of dads that's going to he's yelling over the fence at him he's uh quite circumspect 69 goes through so mains ruddy now into p2 a nice move there very very mature racing move there by cody mains ruddy on jack bussy and i've got to say jack bussy just going yeah he's got me opened up the wheel allowed him through but he said yep i'll have a go at you at the next one or you might have some pace so Lucano in there as well, running the number 43, Alan Moffat's number for a very, very long time in his career. Let's hope that carries him forward like Moff. There's Fawcett again in the black car with the red airbox there, the Total Oils airbox. And uh, the field competing brilliantly. 15 minutes left to go, three laps, four laps now done and dusted with these guys back a shot. There's Liam Lucano, I dare say. Sponsorship space fully available on the side of that car. Full <laughs> white livery. Your name here. And uh, let's see if we can get him some help along the way. Construct down the side of the car of Joe Fawcett. And uh, as you can tell, I'm a bit of a fan. I, I like the way the Fawcett's go about racing. And Joe is... Uh, was a worthy championship in this hotly contested category last season. I, I can see why, Darren. I'm actually sitting here tense. The <laughs> configuration of these cars makes me so nervous, but I'm so excited to watch the racing because just like carts, you can see the cart pedigree in these guys and how they race, how they take their lines, how competitive they are, how much they're pushing. But wow, those open wheels and just the thought of something getting locked. Oh, just... Well, we saw it in Formula V where the tyres rode up over the top of each other. Uh, Having a look back down, these are the Ken engine cars. That number 47, uh, pretty sure that's an RF86. Uh, I haven't got the car on my entry list, um, but uh, certainly looks like an R it's an RF80-something that we're looking at there. And then we go back back a couple of spots. So that's Wilkinson to uh, the 52 of Coleman. And... Uh, 
just watching where Malcolm Colum, that's a swift SC95K. And uh, just getting a good look at what these guys are doing in the Ken Engine car to uh, find out where they are running. Yes. But it's the 47, just reading here, the Swift, and just trying to pick up the back there. That's the 55 of oh, 40. That's not what we wanted to see off. from the 88 at all. And uh, the 88 Evan. parked up there. That's Lachlan Evan at the fork logic entry. We saw having difficulties on lap one has now found the infield. I'm going to say where his park went off at the sweeper. Certainly wouldn't go... Well, I'm not sure he'd get off over there on the old back straight all the way, but certainly a place he could end up understeering off at the sweeper. Here comes the train down the straight now. Eddie Fezzik <sighs> leads the way. Fastest lap is Bussy now in the number 74. So he is coming on thick and fast. Wow. So Bussy, fastest lap around on lap number five. So one lap ago, look at him splay out into turn three. Classic Formula Ford manoeuvre here at Winton Motor Raceway. Try and dive down the inside here. No one made a place, but they all bunched up. Joe Fawcett has now got Frugus. And Bailey Collins off the back there. We're not used to seeing Bailey Collins sitting outside the top five. So... That progression, watch for that. Just off the back here, the ICE Intercapital Express transport car. And he wiggles his way through these tricky set of right, switch right back, left switch right back, right switch right back again, and flow the car, trying to keep that momentum. Uh, I am not a professional driver, Darren, but I have driven Winton. Um, and side by side, going through any of these turns, that I'm, I'm in really impressed. Even for seasoned drivers, it, it, it takes a good driver to do that. Ket Engine Cars now, the 52 gets the move done and moves up a spot there. So that is Malcolm Coleman in the Swift, gets the job done on the Van Diemen. And uh, we see Adrian Wilkinson go one further back. And I dare say up the road a bit further is... Uh, Mark Zellner and Richard Davison. Of course, Richard Davison uh, won the championship after all these years, won the Australian Formula 2 championship right back in the uh, in the 80s. You catch up with uh, Richard Davison's story on the uh, Race Fuels Grassroots Racing podcast. We had a good chat to him out over an hour and a half, and uh, sadly, we couldn't give his entire career the due focus it needs because he still continues on, still loves coming to the racetrack. In fact, his family gifted his first ever Formula Ford to him. They found it. Luke Allery did uh, a uh, bolt on bolt uh, restoration on the car and the family recently gifted it back to Richard. And uh, to say he was emotional about it is an understatement. Oh, I bet. So both uh, Alex and Will made their way down from uh, their racing careers to come down to, I think it was at Phillip Island where they unveiled it and they were there when Dad Got his original Formula Ford gifted back to him by the family. So, cool stuff there. Get a good look at our field now. Sorry I can't bring you the accurate times, but on our screen there, the Formula Ford lockdown, it is uh, Bezik. Back to Cody Mains, Ruddy, Bussy, and then the, the 43 of Liam Locano, and Fawcett, Brook, Coleman, Evelyn at, the 48 is of Jamie Rowe. And reigning out our 10 is uh, Imogen Radburn. So great to have Imogen back on track. The 36 going Car back. 36 there. slowing down. Coming into turn three. That's Mark Zellner in the Ken Engine car. That's a shame. The Miguel SJ01A. A lot of history. A lot, a lot of history in that car of Mark Zellner's. And he's actually parking it off down uh, at turn three. That's a shame. Came third in last year's championship. Here we go, back at the front of the field now. This is uh, Eddie Bezing, and he is driving brilliantly here. He has not succumbing to the pressure that is clear and evident behind him as they all come at him. Yeah, we've got one car in the middle of the track. Big understeer at the sweeper out there. Big, big understeer. And uh, car streaming down from the left hander. Uh, turn 10. Sweeping around there, Eddie Bezik doing a nice job. There's the gap. Bezik, Mains, Ruddy, Bussy, Locano, Fawcett, Frugus, Collins, Everly, 
Rowe, Radburn, Imogen Radburn, just inside the top 10 there with position uh, 10 in car number 29. Strickland High is making his way back as well. Had that uh, horrible start and it would be absolutely awful sitting there in your Formula Ford, not going anywhere and uh, half the field streaming past you before you get moving. Struggling with the timing here a little bit, but it's nice tight racing. It's good to see we've got quite a few all quite a few little battles going on here. The timing's just come back. Look at that. Look at that. The gaps between one, two and three. There's nothing in that. Eight minutes left in this race and uh, at the moment Eddie Bessick has not put a foot wrong and uh, it is the 69 of Cody Mains Ruddy. It's his responsibility to, to either induce a mistake or put it positive passing maneuver on here and I'm going to say at the moment like it's only a meter or so between them 0.2 of a second on the timing screen and it's actually under that now but uh, there's the power now and Bezik is just getting off the back of the corner so much better than the uh, the cars behind him yeah it's been nice and tight racing here what's it in one of these cars Darren what is it like are you using the ripple strips at all or is that really try not to like any open wheelie really try and keep clear of them yeah. particularly <laughs> here at Winton because uh, there's a few ripple strips around here where Mick Ronk just put his size 46 boot into some wet cement and made a made a ripple strip I think they're all gone now they're all like these sawtooth but they, they really upset these light cars you know under 500 kilos with driver and fuel in fact I think it's like 460 or something total kilos so they don't want to be running ripple strips it's all about trying to flow the car nice to say that emma nice to say flow the car son just flow no. the car <laughs> and then you get in a racing position like this where you've got to block and charge and, and try and hold off uh, people coming at you all nice to say that in qualifying but in a race like this it's all about and i reckon eddie Bezik talking about uh the E30s looking up to rip the mirror off. These guys sadly can't reach out to the side of the car where you see the <laughs> orange mirrors and just tilt them away. And so they get a, a tiny little shot. It's only about oh, 10 centimetres by 4 centimetres, the mirror on the side of these cars. And they're an acrylic mirror. So it's kind of like a distorted um, look in them as well. Not like the ones that we used to on the side of your, your road car or uh, any of the other sort of tin top race cars around. They vibrate and all that really all you can see is a bit of a colour in the mirror. Yeah. That and you might get there. a bit of an air pressure oh. vibration on the neck. Just seen a, that's Cody Mains Ruddy, oh, outbreak no. himself, goes back to P5, <sighs> starting to fall into the clutches now. This could be another spot under brakes, looks to the inside, no, Mains Ruddy defends it but he lobs in behind last year's champion in Joe Fawcett who is now up to P4. And the blue flag's being waved there for this battle pack coming through. And this is our, uh, this is in fact our leader. And I'm not sure whether that needed blue flags, but anyway, that's, uh, that's what it is, is blue flags being waved all over the place around the track at the moment, up at turn three as well. They all arrived there nicely well behaved. It was Cody Mains Ruddy that made his own mistake and uh, outbreak himself down into the right hand up and they're starting to come through on some of the, the slower cars that's great work that the uh the ken engine cars have just seen the duratec engine cars coming through there they've just moved over ever so slightly off the racing line to allow them to uh to come through yeah the congestion's real across the back there today Jeez. look at this front group this is awesome yeah We've got like one, two, three, four, five. Seven in fact cars. we've got seven eight cars in under just under two seconds. This is State Series Formula 4 racing at its absolute finest and starting to come up onto uh, some slower cars as well. So great training for these young racers to come up onto lap cars. I'm sure whatever their category comes next or wherever they aspire to, you're going to have to deal with traffic in motorsport at some point. And sometimes they don't see you coming and sometimes they do. I would suggest that's... Uh, yeah, it's Mark Zellner, no, Mark's parked up, I think, up the road over there. Uh, see if we can pick up on that number, the Ken Engine car that was going through there as well. Nicely out of the way, didn't play into this race at all, disturb it at all. Now they're going to fan out to turn three, a bad run by Eddie Bezik off turn two. The 74 around the outside and the 43 of Liam. 
Paul Liam's oh. going to get through. No, he's not. Joe Fawcett, he's on a bit of a watching <laughs> brief at the moment. And uh, Fruger as well. So Maine's ruddy, not taking any further part, getting out of the oh, car. That's, that's horrible after running in second for uh, those uh, initial eight or nine laps. This is really heating up around here. No pun intended, it definitely is heating up outside. Darren, I'm just actually nervous watching this. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe how how nerve-wracking this is. The wheel-to-wheel -wheel action's amazing, especially when I said to you before off air, they're like little potatoes with tooth toothpicks and wheels. If they get crossed, that is all sorts of hell. They try and not they, to. That's... I know, but they're going wheel-to-wheel. -wheel. That is, yeah, that's you know, the trick of the game. Nose to tail, wheel-to-wheel, -wheel, and I'm just sitting here with white knuckles. Emma, you can see how this has been the training ground for so many stars in international motorsport have made their way through Formula Ford over many years and Mark Clark continues to support, you know, by his great media profile, he continues I, to say I this do. is still relevant. I now know when we get 17 year olds into GT3 cars <laughs> and I ask them, are you, are you worried to be out there? They're like, no. Yeah. Where do you want to be? At the front. Yep. Okay. <laughs> yep. Come from Formula Ford, I know where I want to be. Hard so, knocks. Bezik now, they all were all side by side coming around last lap around. Two and a half minutes left to go. They'll know exactly that. We communicated to them. And we have a look at this. There's a white car coming through and gathering it all up. And uh, good skills being shown there. So Eddie Bezik is leading the way. And we've got uh, two minutes and eight seconds. So almost two minutes left in this race. With Jack Bussey, Lucano, Joey Fawcett, Frugus, to Bailey Collins, Everly Rowe, Imogen Radburn up one spot. He's gone through on the 147 of uh, Lockie Strickland. Getting through nicely there as well. Uh, High is also moving up through the field. So disappeared off the back in car number 11. That's Fraser High in the spectrum doing a, uh, a tremendous job, a fight back job, if you like, at this point in time. And Damon Woods, that rounds out our 10. And uh, we get back down to this, the final corner on this lap. Minute and a half left in this race. And I start on the there. Just keeping a very, very close eye on things. A lot of officials around the track. It's great to have uh, all of our volunteer officials that make up this fantastic motorsport community here in Victoria and indeed Australia. This is a great run at it here. The 47 gets through on the 29. So that is uh, Lockie Strickland. And uh, I would say that's Imogen Radburn. Yeah. Ooh. And uh, we've got a spinner. That is that Imogen Radburn? Yes, it is. Yeah, it is. It is too. She's had a spin and just motoring ever so slowly up the She's off return track. road. Um, so that's a shame. Imogen had got herself up to ninth in that race and uh, just fell into the clutches around that lap. And that sort of explains it. It's very, very slowly coming to a stop. She's in a, a safe place as far as uh, staying out of the way, not, uh, not taking safety car or anything like that, not taking any uh, any risks and parking it on the, right on the edge of the track. So that's great. Eddie Bezik leads the way at this point in time. Jack Bussey now coming through. Liam Locarno, Joe Fawcett, Frugus and Collins. Everly to row. Imogen Radburn. Let's go outside the 10 now. Strickland in 10. High in 11. Woods. There's the checkered flag. And that brings to the conclusion race number one for the weekend. Eddie Bezik gets the race win over the number 74, ultimately home there in Jack Bussey. Joe Fawcett on the line gets on the podium and just arrests that from Liam in the number 43. Frugus home in the number 27 in P5. Bailey Collins did a good job for that race and got back up to P6, was down a couple of spots. Everly to row, and there is Frugus just stopped trackside looking down at uh, where the gear shifter would be, so hopefully no <laughs> issues there. Yeah, that's just off uh, in, heading into turn three there, so we may have a, a quick recovery. And we just look back down through. So ultimately, Fraser High getting home there in 10th place. Uh, 
There it is, Emma. There's our finishes. Wow. What what an intro. Eddie Bezik <laughs> gets the win to Jack Bussey. Fawcett, Locarno, Frugus, Collins, Everly, Rowe, Strickland, Fraser High, fastest lap. And that's a good one to hang your hat on. Jack Bussey, a 126.19. A 126.35 was the next fastest one of Joe Fawcett. So uh, some good pace there by Jack Bussey and getting himself on to a podium. Great result there. I'm really looking forward to seeing what the car right behind him can do. The reigning champion in car number 23, Joe Fawcett. And away they go. Everyone looks to turn one now. And Joe Fawcett's been gazumped a little bit on that second row of the grid. It's our pole sitter that gets through. They're going to go side by side here. So the argument continues all the way to turn three. And there's jostling in the mid-pack. And that is traditional Formula Ford where There goes Bailey Collins in the uh, ice into interstate transport entry and getting away very nicely indeed. There's the 23 of Joe Fawcett. He's gone back a couple of spots off the line there, so got some work to do to get his way back up into a uh, into a podium position. Yeah, had a chat with Bailey Collins' dad this morning when I uh, got here nice and early before the crows, and uh, I didn't realise, Darren, how little grip these cars have, especially for these guys coming out of karting where they've got grip for days, they're coming into this and got very little. So this really hones your steering and position skills in the car. And, and I was just blown away by the config of these cars and no grip. <laughs> yeah, they do. They um, they slide around a fair bit. But the uh, look, over the years, they've used different variations of tyres. They've now gone to essentially a radial Yokohama, which, is, uh, which has offered them some good grip and longevity. Um, so that's often... You know, one of the biggest bills in Formula 4 traditionally is front tyres at it, throw more tyres at it, throw more tyres at it. Yep. And uh, yes, that is still in any category an advantage. But then again, you can tune the car to be equally as fast. And what they've found with the Yokohamas over the last like, seven or eight years that they've been running on them is that they can tune them up. Big lock up there. Oh, off in turn one. Nice recovery there. That was great. Right turn at it and then turn into it. And uh, we see the cars coming on. That's the 69 and the 96 went off. So that was uh, young Collins there as well. Bailey's rejoined in fourth out of that. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't talk about grip, Darren. <laughs> hey, Cody, <laughs> Cody Mains ruddy. That was a good recovery by Cody. He was trying to turn in. It was understeering. He turned into what could have been a spin and kept the car pointing roughly in the right direction. And now we're getting a good look. And there's uh, Liam Lucano. He has gone back through well he started out of p2 so the jcb entry has had a bit of a struggle there as well so turn one has served it up for three of our, oh, our big wheel contenders. to wheel oh geez. up in the air there goes the carno off into the dirt they're not sure the other one was a blue car and it's parked up over on the driver's right there, so we can't quite see it. Lucano's going to Lucano's keep going. Lucano's coming back on. Both seem to be coming back on, hopefully. Well, this I is what, what makes me nervous. That wheel-to-wheel -wheel going through the cleavage there, Darren, yeah. <laughs> really makes me nervous. I can't imagine what these, but they must be still minded. Well, we've seen wheel-to-wheel like that. It's uh, not very often to see them not broke, uh, break some uh, suspension at the moment. Very lucky. Very, very lucky there. And those two continue on, albeit right back down the field now. They're continuing in the front, absolutely continuing for it in the Apex Steel car. We are watching for this. Uh, this is just outside the top five. That's Fraser High in the 11, the 55, trying to come through there. That's Torti, Torti as well. Here's the replay. We'll get a good look at this. There they are, right next to each other. And there's the interlocking wheel, oh. and bang, within a, within a millimetre, they're interlocking and up over. So that was right, sorry, left rear wheel over right front, and uh, resulting in both cars going off. But continuing hand, hand of God uh, there, though, Strickland, Lock Strickland's gone in the lane. That's the 147, okay. that was the blue car in that battle, so definitely got a, an issue there. Okay, we do call that the hand of God. <laughs> in Ireland, we, we, we would say that someone's been lucky that day. So Bussy, fastest lap 126, currently sitting in P3. Got the work done now because Eddie Bezik has got himself uh, the best part of three second lead in this race. And um, 
leaders have already gone over the line. So we're looking for Woods. Fraser High has gone up the spot. Got Woods and it's evident. Cody Main has uh, got absolutely work cut out. Started at 15 and now up to 10. Was up to 9th and has just relinquished the spot on that run to the, the timing line in the pit straight. We've got someone off, do we? Trying to Here see. Come our race leaders. That's the 31 of Eddie Bezik. This is hard to keep up with, Darren. We've had a lot of place swapping in the first three laps of this race already. It's action-packed. It is interesting. This is front trio have sort of escaped that, that melee that occurs in Formula Ford racing, and that's where we're seeing this gap back to position number four with uh, Frugus and Joe Fawcett as well. Joe lost the run down to turn one there, and uh, that's a real shame. There's the uh, 69 of Cody Baines Ruddy returning back through the field. Yeah, that mid-pack seven, place seven through to 11, we've got like a matter of one to two to three tenths between any one of them. So and Imogen, that, that Imogen Radburn is off the back of this group there as well. So she's weighing in on it. This is that battle we're talking about. The number 69 makes its way into position number nine. Very and close racing. Evident goes back one spot there in the uh, in the 88. So Lock and Lockie Evan had also come from the rear of the, the Duratec field and has made its way just inside the 10. So those two working pretty well together. It's in 10th place now of Woods there as well. So Damon Woods in the 56 looking to come back at them. For, for, anyone, not, for anyone not familiar with the category, Darren, it, it's interesting to note that a lot of these guys have come out of karting. And when I say guys, I mean guys and girls, mostly under 20. Oh, a lot of them under 19, 18 even. Um, Most of them doing year 10 and 11 at school. <laughs> yeah. And to take on this kind of risk out there in a racetrack and an open wheeler is just phenomenal. Steely nerves and confidence is just... And we're seeing exactly that now, yeah. Emma, with, uh, with Fraser High and Cody Mains Ruddy. Cody Mains Ruddy's gone through on Fraser High. Fraser High had a very brave and courageous race yesterday, recovering after not getting away off the line. And Cody Mains Ruddy now has gone through, and this is a tremendous fight back. It's uh, it's it's one of those things like plumbers say, water fight will find its level, and uh, <laughs> slowly carving it, carving its way back through the field. And Cody Mains Ruddy will find its level. And uh, just over seven minutes left. This is evident. Second to Woods. 0.3 of a second back to uh, Wheel to uh, wheel. Oh, look at that and crossover. Collins. And this is the race. This is P1 and P2 oh. in this race. Down the inside, our race leader holds on. Eddie Bezzi got to hand it to Liam in position number two there, fighting pretty hard. Started out of P4 in this race. Executed a great start and put Joe Fawcett behind him at turn one. Joe's just fighting away back there in fifth place. Imogen Radburn's gone to the pits now. That's a shame. Was up inside the 10. Richard Davison now up a spot into position number 14, the first of our uh, Kent engine cars. This race between Beswick and Lloyd Kono for me, Darren, is everything. <laughs> the wheel-to-wheel -wheel crossover action is fantastic. Very F1-esque for me. Um, I just can't imagine at being that age, 16, 17, and having the nerves that they've got. I can't imagine being the parents in the pits watching this. It's about uh, it's about risk versus reward, isn't it? When you're younger, the, the risk is uh, way out. Uh, sorry, the reward way outweighs the risk that you have to take. It's something that, as life goes on, I guess you get a little bit more aware of your mortality, I guess it is. But these kids, I've got to say, they race like... That's yeah, they really do. They, really do. they come from karting with a certain race craft. Winner. Well, the sole focus is one. That's it. it. it sole focus is one. I know that's stating the obvious, but to go against that danger and all that risk and the speed out there and the sole focus being one, that is that is fantastic concentration. Back back ever where it says motor racing is dangerous? <laughs> oh, duh, we know that. <laughs> we do everything we can to mitigate the, the, the dangers, but uh, when, you know, when it all comes down to it, when you're doing 200 kilometres an hour with someone that's probably not your best friend right beside you, then, uh, you know, you, then you, you've, you've got to try and make that win happen and that's where you've got to put a whole lot of emotions to one side and become pretty steely fast and resolute about what you're doing 
with the vehicle you've got. They get out of carts, as I said, they've got a certain sort of race craft. They then have to get used to changing gears and suspension set up. And let's face it, that's where all the gains are made in uh, modern motorsport. It's the, the, the dark art of suspension settings that uh, we have, you know, great engineers like Rick Kemp that can dial these things in and they, uh, yeah. I sometimes feel as though they get out a magic wand and just wave something over and it's not, it's No, it's, it's so not. technical. Now the jump up from karting into Formula Ford, you know, you've all of a sudden got MoTeC, you've all of a sudden immersed in the world of, of uh, brake trace, throttle trace, you're looking at all your telemetry um, and it's a lot to get your head around. Um, but these guys are well into it and doing so well. This is so impressive. This is a great battle. This is uh, Emily and Cody Mains Ruddy battling here. Cody Mains Ruddy's gone through now. He's got the yellow nose cone and uh, paint job up in sort of the driver's uh, cockpit area. And this is back at, back at 8th and 9th. We're here. Bailey yeah, Collins has worked his way back up from 12th, um, which is great. He was, he was 4th in uh, lap two, but now lap seven, he's worked his way back up to nine, which is great effort. No one's giving you anything in this race at all. No, there's nothing taken for, given for free in Formula Ford racing, that is for sure. And uh, let's throw some light on what we're watching right here, right now. Bailey Collins in the sandwich here between Evan and Woods, and all three of these drivers have got a very, very bright future in Australian motorsport. Battling it out on track now for 8th, 9th and 10th. So they're, they're really essentially battling, battling it out for a 10th place finish in race 2 of this weekend. But it is race 5 of the season. So we're well and truly into the commitment level now and starting to eat into the all-important budget with uh, not not just tyres and not just oil changes on the cars. It's, it's meals, it's accommodation, it's all uh, yeah. the other things that travel. But also at this level, you're also talking sport psychologists, you're talking sim sim racing, so spending a lot of time on the sim. You're looking at your nutrition, you're looking at your whole oh, workout good move regime. There. Oh. Sorry, Emma, Bailey goes through. Well a very nice move there and evident. It is. And making it that stick there as well. So lot the evident coming from the back of this field with Cody Mains running as uh, just been dealt a bit of a blow after working his way all the way forward there. So the 88 just got the 96 go through now. And uh, Damon Woods now looks to the inside. And that's two spots in a couple of corners. Boy, Ebenet, has he put too much into the car trying to get back up the field and now just starting to feel the tyres get a little bit more squirmy underneath him and not being able to respond to these pushes. Cody Mains Ruddy now, who is in position five, fastest lap at 125. And in fact, he is the only one, Cody Mains Ruddy in the number 69, to dip into the 125s. And it's a close one, it's a 125.99. So only just, everyone else managing to do mid 126s. If you're gonna be half a second faster in P5, with two minutes remaining, you want to start to making some passing manoeuvres. So the next one in line will be Frugus. UV starting to creep up too, Darren, and in an open wheeler, that's <laughs> that's a big impact. We're at three now, which is still moderate. But when these cars have different tiny patch of rubber on the road, they're a tiny in the in the big scheme of things, they're tiny in back too, somewhere between 200 and 500 kilos. But uh, it, it's such a small patch of rubber. You can see that. There, it's not much. It's not much more than your, your road going uh, hatch. Well, this oh, is great this stuff. Wheel Cody wheel action. He's given it to Frugus there and just absolutely driven around. There's Fraser High with uh, a really challenging number 91 coming through there, Everly. So Fraser High's gone through there and uh, picked up that spot. Bailey Collins now into eighth. So plenty of position changing in late in this race. Lap, lap seven, eight, and nine so far has been lots of position change. Cody Mains Ruddy now really just showing us a, a master class in Formula Ford racing. Don't forget, Emma, he started out of 15 and is now in fifth. Right, seriously, the top 11 here, uh, there's nothing in it. There's not a lot of comfort that anyone's got apart from maybe Boosie there <laughs> with a four second gap to Frugus, but Everyone else, this is tight. It's on. This is anyone's. You'd have to say with a lap and a half at best, I would say, to go. Maybe maybe two laps. But with a, the lead that um, 
Bezik and Liam Lacano have got with Bussy and then the gap back to the fourth. They are in some mix of that pattern going to be on the podium, albeit that they don't come together as it gets very racy down into turn one. This is the leaders of our race, the 43 Lacano in two, in one and has been all the way around. Two laps to go, we've just been told. Two laps to go. The 31 of Eddie Bezik led every race yet, oh. uh, left lap yesterday. He's done the same so far today. But I tell you what, if anything is poised for change, it is this bit of the race right now. Liam has absolutely got the signal to, yep, righto, we've got to make this win. We've got to get a result here. Could be up at this next corner here, poised for a look to the inside. <sighs> Holds on. Holds on and says, right, I got one more lap. I can have a look down there. How is my car poised? Ooh, it doesn't feel real good. Maybe I'll just line a stern here and have another go. Hopefully, I can keep the pressure on car number 31 and make him make the mistake. But at this point in time, Eddie Bezik's weekend has been largely mistake free. And I won't take anything away from Liam Lucano, Jack Bussey, or even Cody Mains Ruddy, who's now up to P4. Treated to here at Winton Motor Raceway at round two of the Triple Eight Home Loans Victorian State Circuit Racing Championship. At this point, Darren, I wish the steering wheels were higher and they were wearing neon gloves because I'd love to see the work that's the going on. Puts, yeah. <laughs> uh, this is fantastic positioning for the, from these two guys and all of them, to be honest. But he's not giving away anything. One and a half tenths between first and second. Does it get better? Just gone through on Lockie Strickland, so now starting to come into the back of the, the Kent engine cars, but uh, Eddie Bezik maintains the lead. Let's have a look. What can Liam do here in the 43? Holds on. Wow. It's got to be a bit of a send at some point. Was that they even a tyre length? <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, well, then they get out of out of, out of the draft with each other and then line by, side by side, as we saw earlier, with the interlocking wheels the 43 look to the inside no again obviously not feeling the confidence in the 43 underneath him there is liam or has he got another spot that he thinks he's got a stronger opportunity to move on the 31 Edith. and the other thing is uh, m is that uh, the 31's positioning his car beautifully on the track absolutely eddie beswick is a professional door shutter Loving it. He's dealing with the pressure so beautifully. I, I'm, I'm loving watching this. This is the joy of racing for me. And it's not actually watching. a slam of the door either. It's no. just a nice, casual... Gentle. Yeah. No fingers at risk. Yeah, yeah. No, one, no one's getting hurt here. We're no. just covering off. Oh. There's the send. Pulls it up. Positions the car nicely. Bezik just ju just hauls it up mid-corner there. So that stops the flow of the 43. So that is some really good race craft by Eddie Bezik there. He's just done a ripping job to take race number two for the weekend to Eddie Bezik in car number 31 brings the Spectrum 14 to the chequered flag for the second time this weekend and uh, that's a great race I've got to hand it to the driver of car number 43 Liam Locarno a brilliant job there into position number two and uh, I guess there was some opportunities to send it this racing skill still continuing right back down through the field here we're just getting some shots out of the cars continuing on in this race. There is Richard Davison in uh, his, well, the car that his uh, family won Australian championships in. And he is leading the Kent class at the moment and doing it nicely indeed uh, to uh, Coleman, Torty and Mark Zellner. Come on, Mark. Let's get you up there another spot, mate. Big tall guy. As is Richard Davison, they both sort of squeeze themselves into these Formula Fords. And uh, we're just watching these cars come around here. This is Coleman and Torty in the, uh, the Ken Engine cars. And there comes Richard Davison. He'll take the checkered flag in first place in the Kent Engine cars with Coleman and Torty and Mark Zellner just off into the distance there. Great race as always in Formula Ford. Never ever fail to entertain these cars. Here is our results. Final results, Eddie Beswick in, in first, followed very closely by Liam Luyakono. Jack Busey in third, Cody Maines Ruddy in fourth, Daniel Frugus fifth, Fraser High in sixth, Logan Everly seventh, Bailey Collins in eighth, Joe Fawcett ninth and Damon Woods in tenth place.
followed by Lachlan Evanet in uh, in 11th, Jack Winnick, Carly Fleming, Richard Davison for 14th, Malcolm Coleman 15th, Andrew Torty 16th, followed by Mark Zellner, Adrian Wilkinson, Lachlan Strickland, Imogen Radburn. <laughs> goes plunging down into turn one and they all line up to get a crack at it sweeping across the front there is the 43 and getting into the lead of the race there so a great start the scream the hum as it goes past us of the formula fords getting through there as well so Liam Locarno for the first time this weekend into turn one leads the field and Eddie Bezik for the first time this weekend doesn't have a clear view right in front of him and it is certainly a battle on for this, the longer race for this afternoon. And uh, we're sort of a little bit hamstrung here with data ourselves at the moment. So just watching as the field makes its way around the top end of the circuit, we'll uh, get them back into view. That's the 43 that's leading us away and doing a, a tremendous job here. Has held on all weekend long behind Eddie Bezzi and is trying to get this victory. And by leading into turn one, doing the, uh, the hard work is certainly paying off. So that's a nice start there to Liam in the car number 43. But the battle is on now for second place because Eddie Bezik has got his hands full with the 24 coming down there as well. 74, by the way, that's uh, Jack Bussey, not the 24. And there's Cody Mains, Ruddy, and uh, also we see the road Brugis. going uh, there. And Hatch. Fraser High. Oh, this is oh, right. so coming up. Cody Mains, Ruddy, Cody Mains, Ruddy, Frugus, Collins, Everly, Damon Woods, Joe Fawcett back to position number nine, and Fraser High. Back to 10, Cody Mains, Ruddy goes off the track in turn one. And in any form of racing other than Formula Ford, you might lose three or four spots. But I just reckon he's lost about 15. And falls into the clutches, of the clutches of the car that he had the battle with earlier on this morning, the JCB entered outfit. And uh, he's doing a terrific job keeping it all together there. But wow, Cody Mains Ruddy has just undone all of that great work. And there's Fawcett down the inside, the 23, showing the nose to Woods and Emily, trying to bite his way back. Goes around the outside, puts him to the inside for the run onto the back straight. And the 74 has got concerns, that is for sure. That's Jack Bussey. So he was sitting in P3, now gone out the back. Here we go into turn one. And there's our P2. Ooh, Whoa. And that was uh, a violent uh, occurrence, wasn't it? I mean, not coming together or anything, but uh, near enough, slipping the car sideways. A bit of uh, nose to gearbox there. So just go with the big flick, like a uh, old school pinball machine flipper belting the ball up and the kiss ping pong machine to give you uh, all the points but you get around to complete lap number two and it's been a feverish start of this race yeah this is these are highly technical cars high risk cars um, and I was walking around the garage just Darren and these kids are not small <laughs> they're tall they're fit uh, and those the cockpits that they're sitting in are tiny. There's no getting me in them. Um, so it, it, this is amazing. They're they're driving under amazing conditions, and it's open wheel. Well, wow, have a look at that. Defending uh, champion, multiple champion across many decades. Richard Davison has got a blend line infringement, so that'll be 15 seconds. That'll sit over his head. I'm sure that it's going to be too much of an issue because Richard's been very quick in the Ken engine cars here this weekend. Will he be 15 seconds ahead of the entire Kenfield? Maybe not, but he might end up dropping back to maybe second or third in the Kens. There's Cody Mains Ruddy now starting to fight back through the field, currently in ninth spot, trying to get onto the back of Fraser High. And... Uh, get back into contention for this one and then it'll be Joe Fawcett to go there as well so Fraser High in the spectrum and Joe Fawcett also in the spectrum so Eddie Bestwick's just posted a great lap of 126.95 lap 2 yeah it's fantastic fastest lap so far Malcolm Osler set the lap record here last year at 2.32 so we'll keep an eye on uh, on how that one Bailey goes. Collins just, be just beat it with the 126.6. So we're going to see the times come down 
which is unusual for the, for the I mean, it's not unusual for the start of a race, but uh, it's quite hot out there. I wouldn't have thought that the times are going to come down that much more. Joe Fawcett pushes through there as well. That makes up another spot on Damon Woods in the, uh, the 56 Apex Steels supported entry. And uh, around the sweeper they go. Joe starting to get this car working in the window that he wants it to be in lap, uh, we're on lap four now. And we've still got 15 minutes left to go in this journey, but uh, all the temps are starting to come up. The tyres now jumping straight into that uh, operating zone where they do best. And Joe, with his experience of winning last year's championship, knows when the car is uh, best to go. And it looks like this lap he's chosen to go with it. Cody Mains Ruddy looks to go with him there as well and uh, take the number 11 of Fraser High. This is Richard Davison. We're now having a look at with Coleman and Torty in behind. And uh, Mark Zellner in the Miguel just off the uh, back of this mob as well. It's the red, red Miguel back shot there. Race two and race, this, this is kind of similar to race three. We've got a lot of place swapping. It's really competitive. A lot of movement in, in the um, placings. Mark Zellner just down there in position number 19. He's the man that you want to buy all your race apparel off down at uh, Revolution Race Gear. Very, very experienced man. Most worked at Motorsport Australia in technical roles 15 years ago or so. And now uh, back at Revolution Race Gear uh, for the second time. And a very, very knowledgeable man around motorsport is at Mark Zellner. So get down to Revolution Race Gear. Say good day to him. I know all the improved production racers are now big fans of Revolution Race Gear. And look at this, this battle is absolutely turning it on for us at the moment. Two wide, the 56 and the 11 of Woods and High. And High doesn't want to do anything to uh, jeopardise a top 10 finish at the moment. So uh, right now sitting in ninth, so it's the hang on in fact to make up places throughout this particular journey. So Carly Fleming has uh, withdrawn back to the paddock there as well. So not just down pit lane, headed into the paddock area there. And uh, those two cars fantastic. Inside the top 10. So this is that all-important bubble, Emma, isn't it really? You want a top 10. Where did you finish in the back of this 1,000 tent? We're inside the tent. <laughs> finish at the top points, 10. We were points. lucky to get there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, points, points are everything. Not, not everyone can win the race, so you need to take some points home and see where you land at the end of the season. Cody Mains Ruddy's now got Joe Fawcett as well, so uh, the 69 goes through on the 23, and that will have certain ramifications with the uh, point score for the series. Cody Mains Ruddy up and down the field this weekend, like a yo-yo at the moment, but not be enjoying the, the highs and lows of uh, advancing in the field and advancing and then going backwards when you come off or something like that. So Cody Mains running an exciting and skilled race driver. Just Oops. getting a good look back down through the field here. This is Mark Nolan. This is the number 36. And he's got a very, very colourful helmet. And uh, that'll be a testament to the fact that the guy sits on the counter at the Revolution Race Gear. And as I said, get down and speak to Mark. Revo have been around for a long, long time now. Got some good gear and uh, they certainly look after as many people as they possibly can in motorsport and you can see why they from it they do it they uh, put the seat belts over their shoulders and the helmet on the head and go racing this guy started off in a volkswagen beetle that was faster than any 911 you could possibly think of it was immense absolute <laughs> immense beetle had a rag top on it and uh, he advanced from there into a golf it did Formula V racing for a long time. And I'm talking early 90s here, even late 80s. He used to uh, run up the Doncaster freeway in his Volkswagen to work every day, and he was fast. And uh, now finding his way into these open wheelers and absolutely offing at that Miguel, which has got a very distinct and strong history in Australian motorsport. I noticed, uh, Darren, that Jack Bussey has made it back out on track, although Carly is still in the pits, but Jack... Jack's made it back out. He's got a bit of work to do. He's one, 122 down. Yep. And I just noticed that uh, <sighs> Bailey Collins has just set a 126.35. So it's the fastest of the, of the race so far. Bailey Collins has been operating off that podium um, all weekend this weekend. And that's 
an unfamiliar position, a very talented um, race driver with a, a strong future and uh, just struggling, I would say, to get the setup of the car right in the window and, and by the end of the weekend, that's sort of when you want that to occur and it seems that's where he's happening. Um, as you've pointed out, M, he's um, done a 126.35. There's a couple of cars in the front that are operating in the 26s. In fact, the entire top 10 now is operating in the 26s. So he wasn't pioneering into the 26s, but certainly the fastest one, or the first one is the 126.3. 126.4 this time around for Bailey Collins. So that's pretty much where everyone is operating. So matching the pace, there's the car we're talking about. And that was for Bailey Collins. Um, well, you'd hope at least that it's job. an indication that he's liking the setup and he can only get faster and faster. <laughs> yes, that <laughs> is. Uh, you'd like to think that. Oh, no. Oh. Cody Mains rutty. More issues there. What happened there? Did not see that. Was looking at the timing screen at the time. And uh, Cody Mains rutty. More ups and downs. This one's a down this time. Let's hope that he can get it all gathered back up and get out on track. And no, he's no, not he's out, out on car. Oh, what a shame. That is so sad. And such great promise. And look, we'll fight on another day. And here we go. Yeah, it just slowed down. Went to go off to the driver's left. A uh, driver's right. And then went, now hang on a minute. I need to get over to the other side of the track. And did exactly that. So just having a rethink of where the safest spot to stop was and nah. getting out of the way of everyone else. So thank goodness no uh, no need for yellow flags or safety cars. Wow, this is a great battle side by side. They run up to turn 10. And uh, this is strong stuff, Fawcett and Everly. There's the 23, there's the 91, Everly in the mix here. And this is a real bottleneck at the moment. There's uh, six or seven cars starting to bank up with We've got a lot of time left, with over eight minutes left in the journey here. Fawcett to the inside now of the 91 of Everly gets the spot. So, Joe Fawcett goes through in the spectrum and they're jostling, literally jostling for positions behind and that encapsulates Woods, Fraser High, Evident, Lachlan Strickland and Jake Rowe. Yeah, that mid-pack is tight. Look it's at those very times. tight, isn't it? Sorry, Jamie Rowe, not Jake Rowe. The 48 Fabcon car of Jamie Rowe. Jake Rowe is in Formula B. So here we go. Fawcett leading this group. And this is a very, very angry group of Formula Ford racers. Have a look at them. Line astern with each other. Fawcett at the front. They all want him. He is the one with the target. He's the one they've got in the crosshairs. The reigning champion. Everyone wants to beat their teammate and the reigning champion. Oh, like I said earlier, there's a race within a race within a race. It certainly is. And this battle is, what are we racing for? Sixth place. Uh, fifth place, sorry. Joe Fawcett's now in fifth. So Liam Locarno has got a nice lead, just under one second to Eddie Fezzik, which is over a second back to Frugus. Bailey Collins is about half a second back as well. So pretty, pretty tight at the top. And uh, they come straight across the line. There he goes. Locarno completes nine laps. So... Gee, these guys are going to reach out to maybe 16 laps in this uh, in this journey. That's a lot. I don't think I want <laughs> All the tanks are big enough to <laughs> carry them that particular distance. It, it's a demanding race this late in the afternoon. Um, peak, peak heat, peak UV. And these guys are doing a great job. Nothing in it, first, second and third. At and least they get a now. bit of fresh air, Em. They, get the, you know, they, they can just clip the helmet open a little bit. A little you bit mean of fresh hot air. wash from the car yeah, in front? Yeah, hot wash in front. <laughs> Turbulence. Right. Yeah, Never yeah, refreshing. from the car in front. <laughs> yeah. Hot neck. They're good fumes, though. Race fuels provide the good juice for us right through here. This is pretty strong. Okay, so... The red flags are out. Red flags. Red flags. We have no idea. There's no dust going up in the air anywhere. Uh, this could be the only time I've seen We're this trying to we figure out what's happened what's to going cause on. This red could flag. be an official that needs some attention trackside somewhere around the track. We're not seeing the safety cars move in any shape. The recovery cars haven't even got their flashing lights on at this point, but we have got a red flag. We are combing our eyes, our cameras are combing the circuit as well. As I said, there has been an incident where I have seen this before where there is an official with an injury. 
Um, we do have the time, from time to time, calls from trackside officials that uh, they've had visitors uh, that are brown or yellow bellied or red bellied. Um, so that could be, I'm just surmising, I have absolutely no information or data being fed to me at this point in time. And I know our uh, director on the cameras is feverishly trying to find why we've got a red flag. And uh, we've got a service vehicle coming out of pit lane. The pit lane very slowly. Oh, they're stopping right where um, that car was parked up, which was um, Cody Main's Ruddy. Yep. That's right where Cody Main's Ruddy is. Cars no, parked up. Pit exit. Pit exit. No, the car was parked right off. The car was right off onto the grass, and and we've got a declared race. So oh. we did get. Eight laps in, that's enough to uh, pronounce it. And um, there you go. So we will wait for some feedback from Race Control on that. But there it is, M. There's our results there. Eddie Bezik wow. in the lead, took the lead. Uh, actually, they're saying, timing is saying Ling Locarno gets the win. <laughs> so this is throwing confusion across the entire property here at Winton Motor Raceway. Um, I would suggest we may just take a quick break to gather our thoughts here. There's Cody Mains Ruddy being hooked up. There's no need to put a red flag out for that car park there. It was off the other side of the uh, pit. And he exited exit. the car safely as well. 